In the previous lesson in this module, we learned how to use variables in VBA to capture simple values such as numbers and pieces of text. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can use variables to capture references to VBA objects. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and then click the Enable Content button when the file's loaded. If you worked through module three on conditional statements and loops, you'll be familiar with this example. It's this highly addictive game we can play by clicking the play button, which generates a new random number between one and 10 for each player, and then indicates who's the winner or whether it was a draw by coloring in the cells in a different way. Let's have a look at the code that's used to generate this system. If we go to the developer tab and look into the Visual Basic Editor, we'll find the role again subroutine, which doesn't do anything particularly complicated. It generates some random numbers for each player and then simply uses an if statement to determine which player has won and then colors in the cells appropriately. One thing you may notice when you look at the code that's used to create this system is that the same range references crop up multiple times in the same procedure to reference each player's score and also the cells containing the player's uh, description. This isn't a problem as long as nothing in the structure of our workbook changes. But if you think there might be an opportunity for the structure of this to change, maybe a new row gets inserted or a new column, which affects which cell contains each player's score and description, that means we'd have an awful lot of code to change to make this system still work. We could use object variables to solve that problem and also make the code a lot easier to read and maintain afterwards as well. Let's start by declaring a variable which will hold a reference to the cell which contains the score for player one. At the top of the subroutine, just like declaring a normal variable, we can begin declaring an object variable using the dim keyword. Following that, we can make up a name for the variable. I'm going to call mine player one score cell. And then just as we would with a basic data type variable, we can say what type of thing the variable will hold. Now in the previous lesson, we were storing things like strings and numbers. In this example, we want to store a reference to a class of object. The particular class of object we're interested in for a cell is referred to as a range. Again, that should be fairly familiar to you if you completed the module on uh, module two, moving around in Excel using ranges. So that's our first variable. I'll declare a similar one for player two, so dim player two score cell, also as range. So declaring a variable to hold a reference to an object is essentially the same as declaring a variable to hold a basic piece of data. The next job is to set which object the variable should reference. When you're assigning a value to a variable which only stores a number or a piece of text, you simply write the variable name and then make that equal to the value you want to store. When you're setting a reference to an object with an object variable, you must begin the assignment statement with the keyword set. It simply won't work otherwise and you'll receive an error message if you attempt to run the code and you haven't used the word set. We can set player one score cell first of all. And again, as with other variables, rather than writing out the full variable name again, use the IntelliSense list, press control and space, and then look for your variable name. So I'm gonna set player one score cell to be equal to, and then I simply need to reference the object, which in this case is range B2. So I can reference the range B2 object. Just before I close the parentheses here, you might notice that in the tooltip, the range property that I'm using here returns a reference as a range class. So because I've declared my variable as a range, I know that this is a valid statement. I can capture the range returned in the range variable. Let's do the same thing for player two score cell. I can say set player two score cell equals, and this will be range D2. So I can reference range D2. Now that I've set which object my variable should refer to, I can replace any reference to those original ranges with my variable names. So let's start by replacing the lines which change the colors to gray at the start of the procedure. Let's start by just deleting those two lines entirely and replace them. So I'll delete them first, and then I can look for my player one score cell variable. And then if I enter a full stop afterwards, I'll see the IntelliSense presents me with a list of methods and properties 
or the type of object or the class of object that the variable holds. So this IntelliSense list is showing me the properties and methods of any range object. I can refer to the interior property and then the color property, and I can make that equal to RGB gray, which was the same color we used earlier on. Similarly, I can do the same thing for player two. So I can say player two score cell dot interior dot color equals RGB gray. Now we could carry on through the rest of the procedure identifying all of the other references to range B2 and D2 and replacing them with the appropriate object variables, but it's much, much easier just to use the VB editors replace feature. So I'm just going to scroll down so I can see all the code to the end of the subroutine. And then what I'm going to do is just highlight all of the text that potentially contains a reference to range B2 or D2. Having done that, I'm going to press either Ctrl and H on the keyboard, or I can head to the edit menu and find the replace option. And you can see there, Ctrl and H is the keyboard shortcut for this. What I'd like to do now inside this text box is in the find what box, I want to type in range B2. That's the value that I'm trying to replace. And then I'd like to replace that with player one score cell. I want to make sure that I've definitely only got selected text highlighted in the bottom left hand corner. I don't want to replace a reference to range B2 across the entire procedure, module or project, just in the range of text that I've got selected. I can then click the replace all button and what I should find is that I make six replacements. So if I click OK, it will confirm that that is what I want to do. And you might be able to make out in the background that that's already happened. I can then do the same thing for range D2. So I can just alter the text in here and say that's range D2 and replace that with player two score cell. I can then click the replace all button and find that when I click OK, all the references to cell D2 have been replaced with player two score cell at which point I, I can either cancel or close down the replace dialog box. Having made all those changes, I should simply return to Excel now and check that the game still works. If I click the play button, we should still see that the cells are referenced and have their scores updated automatically and have their colors changed to indicate who's the winner. So the, the whole game works in exactly the same way as it did before. To the end user, there's absolutely no obvious difference at all. The difference for you as a developer, though, could be potentially enormous if you decide to change the structure of this worksheet now, and perhaps, as I said before, insert some new rows or insert some new columns so that cell B2 is no longer the cell that contains player one score. All I would have to do at this point back in the Visual Basic Editor is change one single instruction, the one that captures the reference to range B2. If that cell changes, I need to change it in one single place in my code rather than all of the other places we previously had it listed. At this point, you can either continue with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson to gain some more experience with declaring and setting references to objects in variables. Alternatively, you could continue with the next part of this lesson, which talks about how to change the scope of object variables.